Good evening, viewers. Welcome to my channel, Second Matter, the solution to your math problems. We have core mathematics, WASI, September 2024. They just ended uh, WASI. Compulsory question 3. A man travels 4 kilometers from a point I on a bearing of 135 degrees to J. So consider this is a distance bearing problem. So let's quickly represent the first statement in a diagram. So a man travels four kilometers from point I on a bearing of 135 degrees to G. So we have our point I. So there is our geographical note. Geographical note. And there is our point I. And we know that in bearings, angles are away from the geographical note in the clockwise direction. So in the clockwise direction, we have to measure 135 degrees. We know that from the north to the east, that is 90 degrees. So 90 degrees plus what angle will give us 135 degrees. So clearly that is 45 degrees. So we need to measure 45 degrees from this quadrant. 45 degrees from this quadrant. So that is 90 degrees plus 45, making 135 degrees. So from point I, you move to point point G. And then he covered a distance of 4 kilometers. So we have represented the first statement. So now this is the man's current location. So from here, what did he do? He continues 13 kilometers on a bearing of 45 degrees to K. He continues 13 kilometers on a bearing of 45 degrees to K. So from J, he rode on a bearing of 45 degrees. And you know that in bearings, angles are away from the geographical north in the clockwise direction. So from the north in the clockwise direction, we have to measure 45 degrees. So this angle here to measure 45 degrees so what point is here here is point k and what is the distance from point j to point k it was giving us 13 kilometers now what shape are we getting we see that we are getting uh, something like a triangle. But how do we get a triangle? We need to join point I and K. We need to join point I and K. Point I and K. So we now have our triangle. We now have our triangle. Now, the A part said we should illustrate the information on the diagram. So that is what we have done. That is the A part. So we are moving on to the B. So for the B, I, we have to find correct to two significant figures. The length of IK. The length of line IK. Line IK. They are looking for this distance. Now, I've always said that because this is core maths, in most cases, one of the interior angles must measure 90 degrees. One of the interior angles must measure 90 degrees in most cases. So let's try and see which of the interior angles measures 90 degrees. So now we know that the whole of this quadrant measures 90 degrees. The whole of this quadrant it measures 90 degrees. And this quadrant has been divided into two angles one angle measuring 45 degrees so 
the remaining angle must also measure 45 degrees. Now, if here is 45 degrees, what angle must be here? This angle here must also measure 45 degrees because they are alternating. The two angles are alternating. You know that alternating angles are equal. So now what is 45 plus 45 degrees? So that is 90 degrees. So this interior angle here measures 90 degrees. Degrees. So we are getting a right angle triangle. We are getting a right angle triangle. And with this right angle triangle, two of the sides have been given 4 kilometers and 13 kilometers. So using Pythagoras theorem, so this is PI. So from Pythagoras theorem, We know that the square of the longest side must be equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. As you can see, line IK is the longest side because it is facing a 90 degrees angle. So line IK squared must be equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So 4 squared plus 13 squared. 4 squared is 16, 13 squared is 1, 6, 9. So what is uh, 16 plus 1, 6, 9? 185. We are looking for the length of IQ, not the length of IQ squared. So at this point, we can do away with the squared by taking the square root on both sides. So taking the square root on both sides, we'll be left with the square root and the square will cancel out. So we have line IK is equal to square root of 185. Square root of 185. 13.60 but we are asked to correct our answer to two silicon figures so one two we can round up uh, 13 so line ik when rounded to two silicon figures becomes 14 kilometers 14 kilometers so that is for bi now the next one, B I I. B I I. B I I. You have to find the bearing of K from I. You want the bearing of K from I. So it means that the bearing should be measured from point I. So from point I, starting from the geographical note, we have to move in the clockwise direction until we get to the line that connects to K. We are looking for this angle. We are looking for this angle. So I'm representing the angle here as theta. So that is the bearing of K from I. But inside the right angle triangle, there is a missing angle here. I'm representing the missing angle here as alpha. There is a missing angle here. I'm representing the missing angle as alpha. So now, I want us to identify the part of the right angle triangle. There is a 90 degrees angle. And since this side is facing a 90 degrees angle, this side is the hypotenuse. Again, there is an acute angle. And then the acute angle is facing this side. So this side here becomes the opposite. Then obviously the remaining side becomes the adjacent. So we want the measure of alpha. So since we know the length of the opposite and the length of the adjacent, we have to refer from Sokatoa. So 
Which of them has opposite adjacent? Opposite adjacent. So that is two. The one that has two says that the tan should be a, a tan says that the tan of the acute angle. What is the acute angle here? Take note the acute angle is two. 45 plus alpha. That is the measure of the whole of this angle. So 45 plus alpha must be equal to the length of the opposite. Yeah, the length of the opposite is 13 divided by the length of the adjacent, which is 4. We are looking for alpha. So before we can solve for alpha, we need to do away with the tangent here. So how do we do away with the tangent? By taking the tan inverse on both sides. So when you take the tan inverse, the tan and its inverse will cancel out, leaving 45 plus alpha. Then you take the tan inverse of 13 on 4. So we have 45 plus alpha is equal to. So from our calculator, what is the tan inverse of 13 on 4? 72.8973 So now let's make alpha the subject. Let's make alpha the subject. So alpha is equal to 72.8973 so we transpose 45 to the right, so minus 45. So alpha is equal to 27.8973 degrees. So that is the measure of alpha. So at this point, you should be able to calculate for theta, which also represents the bearing the bearing of the key from point I. Now, what is the measure? What is the total measure of the angle in this quadrant? It is 90. So let's take note. Theta plus this alpha must be equal to 90 degrees. Now, what is the value of alpha? So alpha here is 27.8973, so this should be equal to 90. So theta is equal to 90 minus 27.8973. So what is 90? 90 minus 27.8973 so that is 62.1027 so that is what we are getting and then don't forget that we have to correct our answer to two significant figures so when we correct this to two significant figures, we end up getting 62 degrees. And that is the bearing of K from point I. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching.